All right, welcome everyone um, to the uh, February 10 meeting of the Town Council of the Town of Washington. Uh, before we do anything else, I'm going to apologize. I have, I think, a legion of frogs in my throat, so I hope we'll be able to get through the uh, <coughs> whole meeting. Uh, the first order of business is to to go through the agenda and see do we have anything. Uh, um, let's do an approval, a motion to approve the agenda, and then a second, and then we'll go ahead and have a discussion if there's anything to be added. So can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Thank you. Second. Second. Are there any additions or deletions? Oh, no. 
No. We'll just no, that's we'll, fine. we'll defer it's fine. to Max. We'll just send it out so that everybody can look at it. It's just an, another tweaking. <coughs> Yeah, but you should have seen what she and I went through with me and my jet that I tried to put numbers together. But anyway, uh, you'll see that it's uh, in, a, in a new format showing not only income but expenses and also uh, broken down between operations and repairs on the wastewater treatment plan and waterworks and then um, on the town breaking down the income between meals and lodging taxes and other income. So, uh, right, we can just email that. Why don't you just email that out tomorrow? My apologies. That's okay. We can just look at it and go over any questions. And then we'll also have a hard copy of that in the town clerk's office. And you're usually in the town clerk's office 8 to 4. Um, is that when your public hours are, or is it like 9 to 3? 10 to 3, but okay. I'm there. And then also, um, give her a day or two to kind of go through the stuff, but there should be, a, uh, from the Architectural Review Board meeting, there should be some um, elevation uh, drawings of the, uh, of the new post office. Um, and there are, there are also site um, drawings. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, those will be with Barbara by Wednesday or Thursday this week. Just a couple of things to point out on the uh, general account bills to be Paid. Uh, uh, that's two years of the audits. It's ten thousand a year. We uh, paid the other twenty last month, so it's a total of forty. You'll see a check here made out to Mitzi Young. This is to replace the check that was written uh, in November of 2017 that someone never got to her. Uh, to her. No, it's not in the state. She's alive. Her estate. No, it goes to her daughter. It's made out to Mitzi. It's mailed to her daughter. It's not in an estate situation. Um, and Lori's expecting her check. So that's on that one. Uh, and just so you don't think I'm just going around writing checks out to myself. I think you can sign the check. There is a check there. You know, to me for $300 so I could reimburse the handyman that did all the cleanup of all the leaves and everything outside here. And, uh, everything else is pretty much good. Is there any questions from members of the town council on the bills to be paid? All right. Um, now, I, are you making a motion to move? Well, this is for the Potter's Treasurer's report. So. Well, we have to approve the bills to be paid. Oh, yes. Let's make a motion to approve the bills to be paid. All right. Uh, may I have a second? I'll second. All right. We're at seconds. Uh, any uh, additions or deletions? Nothing more than a roll call uh, to approve the bills to be paid. Right? Yes. 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 All right. They are approved. We go out in the mail. Is there a report from the Planning Commission? Yeah. Yes. As long as I can, in my stupor of jet lag, uh, remember what we did. Uh, we have, we're not ready to present anything to the town council yet, but we are drafting some uh, talking points on the mobile food truck uh, potential ordinance <coughs> and uh, also some verbiage to hopefully oh, end up getting referred back to the ARB. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Um, I don't see a member of the Architectural Review Board here. Um, so, are they meeting on this day? Yes, they have one. Um, it's for a screen and porch that they're considering. Mm -hmm. At, sorry. 609. 609 Main Street. That's Megan Smith's house. Okay. And they also. At the meeting this last month, they approved a sign. The OP Bank Yeah, the OP Bank sign. Okay. All right. 
So there will be an architectural review board meeting on Wednesday at 7 o'clock here. All right, Mr. Bennett. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. That's all right. Old business. Uh, I had brought up at last month's um, meeting that um, we received a proposal in the fall from ESS to do an assessment of our capacity. Um, and um, this is important for us to know what our wastewater capacity is uh, going forward. And I presume that's what this is. Um, so it should be in the documents that you have in front of you. Um, it came out less than $10,000, which is a good price to give us kind of a definitive idea of what our capacity is for the wastewater for the future. Um, this is important as the town goes forward to have a good idea of what our capacity is, uh, what our future capacity is, um, as we go into planning and thinking about where we're going to go forward. So I would urge uh, town council members uh, to support uh, the, the uh, expending of the, the funds uh, for this important purpose. Um, so I will go ahead and make a, a motion to uh, approve the funding for this uh, uh, expense of an evaluation of the water and wastewater treatment facilities, including distribution and collection systems, as a way to determine the capacity and future capacity uh, potential for our town's systems. And uh, let me get a second, if I could, on the motion, if there is one. I'll see. So, I'll see. All right. Good. All right, questions? Uh, now, we had that done, of course, before it was built, and then it was reconfirmed after it was built. So, are we using that data? Has it changed a lot? What's different now? I have been led to believe that there had not been a definitive kind of evaluation of this information. There had been an extrapolation that had been done, uh, but not a definitive report. And the extrapolation... Um, the number of homes and people and everything? Yes, I remember quite well. Yes, that's basically how it was designed and built. And we even had a projected increase in the first year and the second year, phase one, phase two, right. phase three. Uh, that, was that for funding purposes? For building it, so we all knew who could come on later. Um, right, the A section with the first hookups and then so on. Mm -hmm. the sort of tier idea. I'll, I'll jump in here because uh, what are you talking about? Don, I always talk to Don. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we are going to continue what we have stated in the comprehensive plan about promoting uh, not just businesses within the town, but inviting people to come to us for boundary adjustments, uh, for various reasons and for them to be able to say, okay, this is what we want to do. This is a big overview. But we can't say yes or no or really even have an intelligent discussion until we have a really in-depth review of if we expand or agree to expand the boundary, do a boundary line adjustment, whatever is being proposed to be brought inside, we have to be able to say, yes, we do have the capacity to do it. So it's... So I think what you're saying, I, what you're saying is that, that that may have been done, but that would have been almost uh, 10 years ago okay. now when it was done. And there have been some 
and Brad, you can speak better to this than I can, but there have been some efficiencies and there have been, once the thing becomes operational, there's, there are different um, realities than what may have been first anticipated with the system. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, doing this because I think the end has grown appreciably uh, and it's going to be bringing on a new uh, use with the uh, cafe, cafe bistro, what's it be called? Eatery. 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 The, the what can we call it? What can we call it? Um, and so I think it's important for us to get some updated um, numbers. But, and the other part of this evaluation is we've changed out components so and some of the components that are still there from the original build so we need to know and look at the age, how much life is left so then we can start projecting and knowing what pieces we want to change or what are going to come up as repairs. Um, you know, this is the only real practical way to know where so this is to be extremely detailed. Yes. Very detailed, because like I said, it would be an inventory of all the components, ages, change-outs. For example, we're changing out sludge pumps right now. The ones that were in there are almost $4,000 a piece. I've come up with a total system. We can change out both sludge pumps and all the configurations for about $4,000. So there are ways to optimize as we go forward. and other things to reduce the energy loads, even as capacity goes up, because that's the other side of it. Yes, we can have more capacity, but then how much more is it going to cost out? So you want to be able to balance that, and that's the stuff we need to know. So it would be a very worthwhile exercise to see where we are. Mr. Mayor, I have one question for Greg, if I may. Yeah. When, in the proposal, when they say projected life expectancy of critical process equipment, Will that give you and the town and Gail the information that you need to really evaluate the financial picture going forward? Yes, because if we, if we see there's a critical piece of equipment and they say it's only going to be good for maybe another five years, then we can say, is there a better solution at what cost? And maybe there's a, an actual process change that we can look at and say, well, it's going to cost us X amount of dollars it's good for a 15-year life. That's something we should be doing or preparing for. That you know maybe improves capacity or just improves the reliability of the plant. Because that's the other side. Is certain critical components when they fail, then we get into some pretty expensive costs where the plant ends up going into manual operation. So someone pretty much has to be there 24 hours a day. So that's part of what this is about. Are there non-critical components that could sort of sneak up on the town? Not, not too many. This is a pretty, pretty simple plant to operate. But if you don't have the aeration going, if you don't have the mixing going on, then your numbers just go off the scale and then we're in violation of DEQ. So that's where it's, it's really critical that, you know, if, and the way our system's designed, there's essentially two basins. So if something goes down in one, we can run on one basin. But again, it ends up you have to be there all the time to monitor it closely. You can't just throw it in automatic and say, oh yeah, we're just going to run one side. So that's part of what we want to look at. Thank you. Question for Brad. Yep. Uh, I know we have a relationship with ESS, but if we were to let it be known that we were seeking a second bid on this, uh, is there someone else who could provide the same service? And would that possibly bring the cost down? Um, I'd have to see who could do the same service on the ground. Because um, it would probably involve uh, some wastewater engineers. I don't know if it would bring the cost down appreciably. Uh -huh. Because if you, if you think we could. You might bring some of the other, then they have a learning curve. Sure. What we have, whereas ESS can jump right into it. Yeah. Because they deal with it every day. Uh, what will we ultimately know after this is presented to us that we don't know now? Well, I think we'll have 
of validation of our capacity, current numbers, and what growth room we have. Um, I think it will give us the information again to do some planning for upgrades or budgeting for repairs that may occur. And so if we know something's coming up, this is why I say the the system they use now, everybody hates it. I mean, you talk intimately with people, they think it's ridiculous what is in there right now. There are alternatives, but the question is, you know, what is that going to cost if we wanted to take the equipment there out and upgrade? And if you do the upgrade, will that actually improve the operation of the plant? So it's, it gives you valuable data to be able to understand where we can go. Um, and I think the other part is it'll give us a little bit of understanding of, of um, as we have new loads that come on, the plant's ability to accept those loads. So if someone says, I want to build a cider or microbrewery, <coughs> can our system handle their wastewater? That kind of thing. Um, you know, we're dealing right now with you know, grease and fats and oils that are, have caused some issues and problems. We well, think we've got some solutions to that. But again, it's knowing that going forward. Brad, can be broken into two questions? I mean, if we want to rely on the fact that we know this plant is designed to pump, you know, deal with a certain amount of materials, I appreciate the let's get out of the we're playing catch up with repairs all the time, so we should have an evaluation of what the life expectancy is so we can actually budget to replace things. So, is this a task that can be broken into two parts, or can we just ask the SS to do that assessment and we'll deal with the capacity issue later? Well, they kind of go hand in hand. Because you're going to look at all those components because they all play into what is your capacity. Because I, because one aspect of this, and Don would confirm, as you're looking at this, let me say, if you have com critical component failure, how's that going to impact your capacity? You suddenly go, oh, we're in a situation where, you know, we can't, we can't really handle the load that's coming in, and you literally end up. In our situation, well, we have to just pump and haul it away, you know, these kinds of things. So that's where it really dovetails together. So, um, as I recall, the, we were per permitted by the state for 60,000 gallons per day. We still have that permit. And the plant was originally designed for a capacity of 60,000 gallons per day, although the town chose to phase the implementation of actual use in the stages. So last time I heard it was averaging what, around 28,000 gallons per day, 25? Yeah, I don't know, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. And, and I, the number I had on capacity was 65,000. And again, I don't know where that came from, but we're all in the same ballpark. So in, you know, in terms of just flow into the plant, yeah, you should have considerable headroom you know, to add more customers and, you know, varying customers. Um, but at the same point, you still don't know from, from where you started, are you really able to handle, are you handling accurate, adequately, you know. Fortunately, all of our effluent is passing, you know, DEQ regularly. We haven't had any real upsets. Um, we have a couple equipment problems. And we did exceed numbers. We notified DEQ. It was all dealt with. We didn't receive any penalty for that because we were proactive and we were right on top of it. And it was corrected fairly quickly. Um, but again, it all comes back to this whole idea that you really need to know if your flows are at this amount, you know, are we, are we doing the job right? I think there's another thing that I would like to add, which is. Is it possible also if they're talking about um, needing to do upgrades, it would be nice to add to the proposal if you're doing ABC upgrade, would it have an impact on the capacity number? Mm -hmm. Well, if there's, there's that, and the other part is there's always new regulations coming down the line. You know, they now want you to treat for this, and they treat for that. You got to remove this, you got to remove that. So as part of this, working with Don, 
you know, what's out there that may be coming three years from now. You know, it's just starting to get picked up now. I just to give you an example, I just read an article about a landfill in Michigan that has begun testing for a particular compound in the landfill, and they are probably a year ahead of anybody else because it's in the legislation, the rules are coming down, they've already moved forward and started doing this. So if we know that there's something coming that's going to change our sludge volumes or requirements or nitrogen levels going out, then that needs to get played into, oh, is there going to be an upgrade equipment-wise that you have to even put in place? Or at our current capacity, you know, are we at the limit? That, oh yeah, your nitrogen levels can stay at this level, but you can't add any more capacity because your effluent's going to exceed that. So this is a teeter totter you kind of play with. If I, how, how much money do you spend on this year? Uh, how far in the red is really my question? Uh, we're, all, we're in the red on repairs. Mm -hmm. We're currently at 146% budget. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got we have not hit budget on waterworks, but I don't think so. It's it's just one of those we. I guess my question is: Is this something we need to do before the end of this week? I think I think we do. I really think we do because if we don't have the answers, we can't. Tell people who want to come into into town what they can and cannot do. So I, I think even beyond that, I think it's important for us to, as we are in the process of beginning to build a budget. Sorry, we don't want to be in this situation every year. I wasn't there. And, right. and so I think having a chance to get ahead of this a little bit, to be able to understand what's going on, is going to give us a better chance. The news may still be grim. But at least you have a better chance to prepare for it. Yeah. And, yeah. and my sense that the cost of doing this for roughly $10,000 is a small price to pay to get uh, the peace of mind to know that you're going to, to be able to meet the capacity needs not only for people who may be wanting to come in, but our largest business is growing substantially. Mm -hmm. With uh, more wedding uh, and large um, event um, or large um, uh, population events going on, as well as a new um, uh, place coming on sometime at the end of the summer, I just feel like we need to have a sense of what we are. So I, the price I, I feel is relatively low. I had not thought about this being so important, but as we start thinking about the budget, as we start thinking about all these different things, I just feel that we need to um, have an idea now as to where we're going. And, and the post office is hooking up. The post office will hook up, yeah, but that, but that will be a pretty right. small. Yeah. No. But we have to finally start doing some long range planning. Right. This fire drill all the time is driving me nuts. Sorry. Yeah. It'd be nice that you know, uh, we could all sit down, Brad, especially with the infrastructure part, and really lay things out on the library. Have a library plan. Yeah, and we're, and we're getting more proactive. You know, we've had a couple of incidents of fire. You know, the guys are pretty sharp, so they've been able to steer us away from violations, but it has push the plan, processing capabilities. We know where the where the issue came from, and we've worked to get it resolved. We're working on that to improve that going forward so that it becomes less of an issue. But again, part of this evaluation is, you know, we can place that area. If that were to happen, do we have the equipment, do we have the right system to address it? So. My recommendation would be to offer Don Hurl 20% less than he's asking based on the uh, difficulties we're having budgeting this. And I believe he would accept that. There's no 
materials that he's putting out here. We're not buying anything but time and expertise. In the middle of the winter, uh, somebody can sit in an office and do this and we can take a little less. Otherwise, he, we could let him know that uh, the council thinks we must have a second to bid. If you want to do that, that's fine. Offered seven thousand five hundred. Well, uh, we do have a problem paying for this, and uh, he's received quite a lot of income so far, and he has a bit of a monopoly on us. And I think it's time to turn the tables a bit. We have to stop seeing him because Don just retired. Oh, okay, the company. Yeah, yeah. Just and I think they'd like to continue their business with us, and they'd like to like to uh, be able to execute this evaluation. They're essentially going to make us uh, make a shot of this for themselves to yeah. for work that then sells to do. So that can be seventy six. They say is then they can place yeah. things for them to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he says no, I'll be surprised. All right. Okay. So I have to reach back into my Robert's Rules of Order. Um, I think at this point we have an amendment to the original motion. Do we have a second to the amendment? I'll second. Thank you. Do, let's have a roll call vote to add the amendment to the motion. Yes. 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 All right. The amendment has been added to the motion to, um, to accept the proposal, but at the price of, would you say, 7600 Yes. Seventy-six hundred dollars, um, and so that amended motion <coughs> is on the floor. Uh, any other questions or discussion? If he says no, then do you want me to try yes. to find a, one or two other firms to do the work? Let's just get. A, I think what was proposed as part of the amendment is that if, if okay. he says no, then get a second proposal. Okay. We may still go back to them at the if but if, if the second proposal comes in lower we may end up going with that one. Okay. Alright. Let's give you this. Um if he says no to twenty percent and then he says fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Alright. Alright, let's go ahead and get the um, the uh, motion um, voted on, so the amended motion is on the floor. Uh, roll call vote to approve the amended motion. Barbara, do you feel like you have it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Uh, those in favor, or Brad, uh, do you uh, approve the motion? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, Good. The next thing we have are budget assumptions. I know all of you work tediously through the night, many nights, to think about budget assumptions for the budget for 2020-21. The town, for those of you who don't know, the town has a uh, uh, July to June fiscal year, so the new year would begin July 1st. So the budget will be for that time. We will be having a budget work session on Saturday, March 28th. Saturday, March 28th. It's inscribed on your brain. Good. Right here. All right. Um, are there any budget assumptions that we should be adding? I think that Brad and I are going to be sitting down and looking at um, things like how many of the water meters have to be replaced and things like that. So there will be some infrastructure work, if you want to call, call those assumptions, that we'll be working on. Um, yeah, there's, <coughs> this goes back to maintenance. Um, you know, the water works, we have had the 
tanks evaluated. <clears throat> they appear to be in good shape. But they are going to need to get painted properly. The last person that did it had no business doing what he did. And so they've got to be done properly professionally. I got the name of the money. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, there have been several instances now where um, things have been done that have not been properly supervised. And, and so I guess it brings to my mind is there some process rather than leave it all on a volunteer, is there some process that we should look at to try to ensure that things are done in an appropriate way? I, I, I ask that as a rhetorical question. I don't know what the answer I'll is. I'll answer it because he's been drilled, he's drilled it into my brain. <laughs> if, uh, and this is a perfect example <coughs> that, for instance, the tanks, the filters that have to be paint, painted and sandblasted and everything that Brad said. It has to be an industrial licensed contractor who knows how to do it. So you don't just go out and get a painter. Right. So, you know, thanks to Brad, if you want to call it systems in place, nobody gets hired that isn't licensed and experienced to do. You know, we're lucky to have Brad now. Right. Who understands that we can't just go out and get a painter to go paint these things. So I think as long as we keep him chained to the town, <laughs> we'll be okay. So he's yeah. basically our stop guy. Okay. But I so, so and and that's good because answer. because nothing personal, but he's cheap, which is great. <laughs> right. um, I don't but, want to answer your question. But, but based upon the Mac truck theory. Uh, which fortunately there are very few Mack trucks that come through town, but based upon the Mack truck theory, uh, should we have a backup plan to ensure that there is someone? I, I guess we can approach that if the issue comes up. Yeah, it's, yeah. I just went to ESS today. I grabbed his berry and just shot them an email saying this is what we need to do and who do you know who is qualified to do it? So it's, yeah. it's finding the right person. Well, a lot of it can come down to, you know, if you're mowing the lawn or trimming the bushes, there's lots of guys who could do that or take a tree down. But we've extended that into critical items that allow that to happen. And it's really where you have to take a step back and go, no, you need people who are properly trained, that's their business. And it does cost more to get done, but then it's done right, and usually you have someone to go back to if it's wrong, you can hold them to the fire. And I think what we've done, you know, as happens, you sort of maintenance gets kicked down the road a bit. I mean, you can look at the high school and schools. They did a lot of it. No, we'll put it off, we'll put it off. Someone else can fix this, or. Right. That. Right. And then what happens is, then you get faced with a big bill. Right. So, you know, it's like the tanks, um, we know that they're decent, they can stand the pressure according to the engineer, so we don't have to worry about compromise or having to replace those anytime likely, soon. Um, but they should be properly painted so we don't get rust and corrosion from the outside. And that coating that was on them originally is, it's old, it's failed. And so we need, and like they were never painted at the bottom. So this is where you need someone who's willing to get underneath there, get dirty, and do it right. And then, and then they'll be good for another 10 years. Okay. Let's get back. Uh, any other budget assumptions? Mr. Whitehead, I'm looking to you. <laughs> I feel like uh, being a dead horse, well, I, would, I look forward to the session and trying to get the books. Black With your rapier wit and your work, rapier pen. <laughs> my pen and my calculator are well armed. <laughs> All right. Any other, uh, anything else to add on that topic? I, I think we'll probably have a better go with this this time around because I think our county systems are better aligned. So I think we're going to have a better chance of 
Where we stand. Yeah. I'd like to thank the town clerk on that comment. Thank yes. you, Brad. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. I will want to uh, just say that I had no time to yell out about this sort of forestalling any further discussion about overhauling IT systems and websites until we did the budgeting process. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Forestalling any further consideration of upgrading the website, etc., until we get through the budgeting process for this year. We'll consider that as part of the budget, I guess, yeah. numbers. All right. Next item, we are looking to have a town social event on um, March 1st. Um, Catherine has graciously agreed to uh, marshal us as needed for the event 4 to 6 p.m. for uh, residents of the town. A, uh, I think we had talked about last time, uh, potluck. Yes. And, uh, look at that. Oh, pretty. That looks great. Right. So the so details, do you want to do it? Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and give some details? Sure. It's for anyone who works in the town or lives in the town or does business regularly in the town, their family, friends. Um, it is a hot luck, which I'm afraid was deleted from this one. Ah, oh, it says up here. We might have to um, emphasize it. that a little more. Um, afternoon appetizers, libations, bring your favorite snacks, desserts, and friends. Um, the libations will be supplied by the town of Washington, and everyone else will contribute their favorite hors d'oeuvre or whatever. Or afternoon snack. That's right. Excellent. And, and we will hold it here? From 4 to 6. And we said we were going to hold it here. And that's, I think that is already sent out on the water bills. Yep. So, so y'all come. There's no switching <laughs> into the other office. No. no. That's what this building's for. That's what this building's for. So it's really just a chance for us to get together, to celebrate the end of winter, uh, to come together as friends and to get to know each other better. So those um, of us who leave, uh, lead hermetic lives in the wintertime, uh, go see them, rouse them out of their, their uh, dens and tell them to come out. Uh, it's time for the buds to rise. It's time for the folks to come together. So March 1. Thank you, Gather. All right. Um, do we, how do you want to go forward with any more details? Do you want to get around to us? Um, well, I volunteered. I'm going to run these off and okay. uh, okay. take but, a but let us know. Uh, draft us for whatever you need us for us as members of the town council um, and uh, especially Gail. And and we will look forward to doing this. I also I hopefully Marianne will be better soon uh, so that she she's a, a good staff lieutenant to work with. You on this. Oh yeah. And we'll, we'll supply more paper products and yep. stuff. Those things. Yep. Right. We'll have beer and wine. All right. Um, reminder to use the town email. Mr. Whitehead? I will. Or Barbara, one or the other. Once again, just a reminder that you all now have town council email accounts. We're required to use them for records keeping, so please use them. When you're responding to official correspondence about town business, yeah, you can yeah, forward yeah. it to a personal email account if you want to, but you need to reply. I have to account. ask you that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I attempted to forward it to my uh, one of my other accounts, and um, it seems to only work when you're actually signed into it. Exactly. So I'm doing something wrong. It's not forwarding when I'm not signed in. Maybe what you guys, maybe what you can do is 
Yeah. Connect in afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And figure out. And Mary Ann's not receiving her since the end of January. She told me today. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Yeah, I'm sure it's operator error. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we are required to do it by all supervisors. Right. And we're and it's awesome. yeah. so, so that's all my is going to be using. Yeah. Um, approval to hire clerical support for the summer. Who we we are using this to help deal with the backlog of stuff that we have. Digitizing the records. Oh, digitize. That's right. So what we have is, um, in addition to Barbara trying to do her regular job, we have a lot of stuff that uh, needs to be gone through and digitized. Um, and it would be nice to have some clerical support in order to do that this summer. Yes. We're sitting with minutes going back to 1953 that we have one copy of. Mm -hmm. That therein lies the, you know, the history of the town, basically, for the last however many years. That we really need to uh, get coffee in the five or six. So are you scanning Did everything? You? Yeah. So really, it's a scanning job. Right. Mm -hmm. And is there more? Are there more duties other than that? I'm sure there would be other duties involved. <clears throat> You're really talking about likely a. Uh, Paying someone, a high school student type person, and that kind of wage because this is not uh, rocket science yeah. stuff. It needs to be done, but it is stuff that needs to get done. Yeah. And it, again, it's it's something that can be put off, but if um, a sprinkler breaks and all of a sudden all that stuff goes, there goes your entire history. All done. It'd be nice to also be able to go into Barbara's office, <coughs> the town clerk's office, and not be greeted by uh, 50 boxes. Yes, it would. It sure would. So the whole thing about summer help, that's because we would like high school kids, high school kids not because we're taking off for the summer. No. She's not allowed to take vacation, let alone take off for the summer. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's to hire someone for several months, um, and it's really a task-oriented activity, um, but the, the anticipation will take some time. <coughs> okay. Did you, do you have any estimate of what the cost would be? What's the going rate, $10 an hour? About, but I think for tonight, what it is is you're approving that we post an ad to get applications for it and they'll place a bid with their application. I talked to John about this and we need to run it for two weeks. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. Well, let's have a motion first and then a second. Okay. Do we have a second? One second. All right. Uh, now. Have we approached or seen the local high school about just getting an intern to do it for some sort of credit this summer? We have not. There's always that option to do that. There's a free call. That they're going to get something out of presumably about the administration of the civic institution. Perhaps we should contact our local district teachers. There's someone on the work release program. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the last person. Wait, I'm not having any office of So, um, I guess Jimmy's the principal, right? Jimmy Swindler. Swindler, yeah. He's the principal of the high school. He'd probably be the one to start the conversation with. Could be the yeah, beginning right. of their career in politics. Right. <laughs> or archive. Yeah, or archive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great story. Right. <laughs> All right. So um, we have a motion, we have a second to at least uh, be able to put the ad in. Well, I don't have to ask that we amend it and that we 
Yeah. Go to that high school next week and see if we can find if there are none of us having some sort of intern do the work. All right. Well, yeah, they may do it as a and then two to the service of credit. Well, the action. other thing is to um, to turn down the original motion and have a new motion that says go to the high school, address them first. If we can find something, then we can go ahead at the um, March meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, for a substitute motion that we go to contact local high school and see if we can turn for the summer. Okay. Did you take your the records? Good. And other small tasks. Other small tasks. Other necessary tasks. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. Um, Brad, approve? Yes. 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 So we are approving a motion to approach the high school for an intern, and then we will defer on the um, motion to approve um, uh, posting for hiring clerical support and bring that back up at the March meeting for discussions. At that point, it would be, I guess, old business. And with that, we are now I open it up to the public forum. Yes, ma'am. About your proposal to ensure that there's backup for decision making on wastewater and water treatment. Uh, I think that's something that needs to be done. All the responsibility is falling onto Brad and Gail. Um, while exceedingly capable, they have many other duties. And why is ESS not capable of, of helping make those decisions? Why aren't, the, why aren't they telling you who the professionals are that you need to hire? Aren't, well, should, shouldn't they be? Well, Craig is for paying the tanks. Craig's given us a name okay. and stuff, and, and we do. I, I talk to these guys regularly down the plant quite a bit, talking to them about various things. They give me their input as to who to talk to, where to go, and stuff. Um, you know, it's just with Gail and I here, it's sort of a new day because nobody did it before. I know. You know, and but we, we don't want you to wear out either. No, no, no. I mean, you have you have your own work, <laughs> and yeah. and this process. Is ongoing. It, it's, it will never. Well, I wouldn't say never. I mean, we're trying to dig out from a lot of stuff. If, it, if we had done this from the very beginning, everything, there'd be systems and, you know, a database of people and companies that we just draw to and need something, we just go there. Sure. So we're, we're having to kind of build that right now. So it, it won't be like this forever. And we just need to get a good handle on it where we are, and then it's an easy path to set up and say, here's where, here's where we go forward. Okay. So I was hearing two questions from you. The first is, what is our backup plan in case, which was the question I was asking about the Mack truck. That's right. Yeah, to Brad, and, and we have not addressed that yet. And then the second question, which I think Brad answered is, um, do we have a way of getting the information of who are the technical people that we need to get? And I think Brad answered that and says we do have those from ESS. Okay. Um, and so the, the, I think part of what we have to do is, is when we come together on the 28th of March, um, one of the things we have to do is look at um, what is our backup plan? in case something happens to Brad. Um, I mean, we all kid about, you know, chaining him to the town and not letting, giving him a collar and it goes beeping every time he tries to go out of town. Um, but in all seriousness, we do need to have a backup plan because we don't want to be in a situation again where there are the members of the town council and don't have someone who has the engineering understanding of what's going on. Well, even if they do, um, it, it's, it gets fatiguing after a while. Uh, I've, I've talked to 
previous council members who who just got worn out with so much. We have one thing in our favor that didn't come before the town council. This will just give you a little forewarning for the March meeting. Uh, Dawn has retired officially from ESS. He's still doing some consulting work. And he has sent me a proposal, just similar to how we have Laura out there as a approved consultant so the buyer can just call her. You all will get a copy of Dawn's uh, okay. proposal consulting. for consulting for the town. So that's going to be one. Uh, that's a potential solution. Yes. So at least it sounds like there are two answers. One is there may be a potential. Second is I think uh, Barbara, if you would put it down for part of our agenda as one of the budget assumptions on the 28th is to look at what is the, the backup. Yeah, I haven't sent you that far, but I didn't know I have, because you were sick. Thank you. I'll send you Don's proposal. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Any other comments from the August group that we have in front of us? All right. With that, I will close the public forum. Um, open session. I'm not quite sure what that means. I think of a leftover from the closed session. I did not know that. Is open session, yeah. what's open session? That's what we have happening. You back into open session and close the public forum. Okay. I think so. What we need to do is make sure that the, uh, when you put together the agenda for March, that you, that you expunge that <coughs> open session. Because that's confusing the mayor, not other people. <laughs> <laughs> As to what, what that's all doing. <laughs> <laughs> Having uh, ended with that profound thought. Um, at 8.02, I asked for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I so do. Second? Also second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.